Say hi to all the forms participants. Here they are. Um, we had 15 Kikas um, international multimedia developers at forms. It was really, really good little conference. Um, it's actually uh, got a very strong focus on um, attacking issues in multimedia. And as you know, open multimedia, open media software, um, we still have a long way to go in order to compete with um, the uh, proprietary software. Um, and but on a lot of um, frontiers, we're actually leading the field. And um, we need to make sure that we can stay ahead in some of the uh, issues and follow up on some of the things that we haven't um, quite caught up with yet. And that's what FOMS is about. Um, we had, where is the link? Whoa, stop. As for participants, um, Andy couldn't make it after all. So this is the list of participants, people from Dirac. Um, uh, so that's Anu over here. Um, from, um, where's Tim down here? Diora as well. So we had codec people there. Uh, not so much the audio codecs this year, uh, the audi audio codec developers, but we'll hope to rectify that next year again. We had a lot of them last year. Um, and um, we had a big focus on um, web stuff, um, video for the web. Um, there's Charles from Opera here, as uh, Chris didn't actually manage to come. Um, but a lot of us are doing um, video for the web work. Michael here, um, Jan also a little bit. Um, and um, then there was a bit of a flash focus this year. There's uh, Rob from Nash and uh, Benjamin from who's developed Swift Deck. Um, and um, most of these people are going to say more about their work later. But you can see we've got a, a, a vast vari variety of people at forms covering a lot of the key um, media software um, in, uh, in open media technology. Um, so what did we actually talk about? Does that work? No. Here? Here we go. I'm not going to write it now. I wrote it yesterday. Um, we had a uh, huge discussion on a lot of issues. Um, not just one discussion. In fact, we went into little breakout groups and, in fact, there are 10 breakout groups that we had. Um, firstly, of course, the whole patent and legal issues, which are still a very, very big headache. Uh, for one, it's holding back Theora from becoming the baseline codec in the new HTML5 video element. That's one of the, uh, the big things that's holding up progress in open media technology. And so um, Rob here is going to spend some time um, during the conference. You've got to talk on on Friday um, in the afternoon, 4 o'clock. Um, go there. He's got a lot to talk about, and he's got a really good um, new um, initiative called Open Media Now, um, which is attacking a lot of the issues in uh, um, around patents and uh, uh, licensing issues uh, around uh, existing proprietary codecs, but also around the FUD that's going on around Open Media Codecs. Um, so we had here uh, come up with some short-term goals. Open Media Now, we've decided, is the right container, and we're all going to support that initiative with what we can. Um, and what we can do as, as developers is, of course, provide documentation, and documentation is one of the big, big um, sticks we've got to hit on the patent issues. Um, so um, Rob has encouraged us all to write more documentation, which can only be a good thing. Um, but he's also going to talk to Mozilla, Google, um, and on to maybe um, uh, basically everyone <laughs> to get out um, the documentation they have. And that might not just be technical documentation. That might be research into patents that they've already done that they just haven't published yet um, um, or any other documentation related to the uh, patent and uh, licensing issues around codex. Um, He's also going to look into expired patents, so to um, s beat some patents on the head by saying there's prior art, you're not actually active anymore. Um, and, um, well, the main thing is getting more people behind this project. So if you want to be active in it, go, go to the website. Is there a donate button there yet or something? 
<laughs> so any Drupal experts here help Rob put an image into Drupal? <laughs> So his main goal at the moment is to get 10K to start to get Groklaw involved with this. Um, Groklaw who's done a lot um, of uh, activities around the issues with SCO. Um, and um, so they are now thinking about helping us with the patents and Rob's um, all for it. Um, so are we. Uh, and of course for, for um, more longer term uh, work on that, he'll need a bit more money, and that's his estimate for the moment. It'll take a bit more than that to keep it going for the, I guess, 10 to 15 years that this whole initiative will probably take. Yes, yes, the global financial crisis is a big problem at the moment, but I hope we'll get over that at some point in this um, century. <laughs> okay, um, so I... Uh, I'm going through this in, in order. Wow. The web browser is faster than me. It's too early in the morning. So the second point that we talked about was Ock and Firefox, in particular a library called LibOcPlay, and we identified technical issues to fix around that. Um, uh, we were discussing whether we should support Firefox 2.x still about it, uh, um, with backports and stuff, but the API has changed so much. Um, and the implementation for Firefox 3 is just working and Firefox 3 is about to release, so we decided not to go backport. Um, there's some seeking problems that need to be fixed, um, and uh, we want to get the RAC support into it as well, so I have the new um, codex, the more modern codex support in it as well. Uh, currently it's only supporting Vorbis and Theora. Um, and um, there's some buffering issues. I won't go into it, but there's technical issues that we discussed and that we're going to attack. The uh, next topic was authoring tools. Um, people complained that it's really hard to create um, content in open media codec formats, so in Oxiora and other formats, because the, there's only a uh, small amount of authoring tools and in particular capable authoring tools for these uh, out there. Um, that's starting to be attacked with things like PTV um, that Edward's developing and I think talking about later as well. Um, PTV is natively, if you by default, um, if you export a video, it's exporting it into OCK Theora, which is a really big achievement. Most of the others um, probably export by default into AVI format or something. So that's not obviously helping open media codecs. If we want to push open media codecs, we need to have authoring tools that export natively and by default into open, into the open formats. Um, also, we found that what we haven't really done is a systematic analysis of processes that people go through when they author um, video and audio files. So we want to identify things that people do in professional production workflows and see which bits of that pipeline were actually still missing so that people will actually be handed the tools to do what they do in professional environments, also in the open environment. Um, and um, we want to make little videos about things that are common to users to uh, um, help them uh, create, say, a screencast or um, little other things, um, I don't know can't think of anything right now, but I'm sure you've had, you've all been wanting to create videos, had a little problem to solve and wondered how to do that with open software. Um, yes, there's also a, a swag of video editing software being developed in, a, in web environments now. It's starting to get uh, more interesting with the MetaVid environment, but also with Robin's um, ICS, which is a server-side uh, editing tool, basically. Um, and um, we encourage them to export, to be able to have an export function to export to Oxiora, so you can actually use that also as an editor tool. Um, next topic was web video servers. 
um, that was basic, basically a focus on the functionalities that we'd like to have from web video, web-based video service that uh, goes together with the uh, video element in HTML. Um, so what do we need server side in order to provide the best functionality client side? Um, and one key issue there is uh, temporal URIs or timed fragments which is a working group at the W3C uh, that we're involved with, both Conrad and I are active in it, um, because we originally also wrote this spec for temporal URIs for OGG. Um, that spec has now been picked up by the W3C and is being analyzed to be taken forward to standardization with some slight adaptations probably for other codecs. Um, so, yeah, but that is a big thing because then you can ask the server for a chunk of data out of a very long video file. You can just get a little bit, and that's very important. Um, timed text was another big issue. I'm going to give a talk about that um, in a very short amount of time, in about half an hour. Um, uh, after, 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 morning tea. after morning tea. Is that not in half an hour? Okay, in about an hour, whatever. <laughs> I only just woke up. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, the issues that we talked about here are how to handle time aligned text that could be captions or subtitles, but also things like annotations, um, metadata, and things like that. How do we handle that in a, uh, a web video environment? Um, and how would, do we handle that in relationship to OGG? Do we want to have that encapsulated into the OGG file? Do we want it in a separate file because that's better handling on the web? And, and all these issues, we discussed that. Um, then we had a few smaller groups. Those were the big discussion groups that we had, the big breakout groups. We had a few smaller breakout groups with two or three um, interested people, um, and uh, they mainly identify things that are really bugging people. Um, for example, in FFmpeg, um, we raised the issue of release, uh, that they are not actually doing um, proper release cycles and um, proper testing and API stability around that. So um, we w want to encourage the FFmpeg community to follow um, that practice, which is um, a very big um, helping issue to get, to get it packaged and um, to have uptake. Um, GStreamer, um, it was identified that GStreamer has a lot of low-level functionality, but not really uh, high-level APIs. So there were some discussions had to um, create more convenience APIs. And GStreamer was one of the um, little discussion groups. And in Dirac, Dirac was, it was actually fairly obvious what to do with Dirac next steps, because Dirac's now a really um, well-developed codec, it just it hasn't got all the uh, software support yet. So we discussed uh, which software should now also start uh, supporting Dirac. Uh, that's LibOcPlay, obviously. That's Firefox, which um, Jan will be talking about afterwards. Uh, FFmpeg to Theora now also has an FFmpeg to Dirac version, which is very important. And we're talking about maybe to integrate the two, and that would be through a creation of a common um, library for um, CIF, code, CIF video codex, which was tentatively called libfisheye. <laughs> um, Jack was discussed. I don't think we've, I've got all the information about the discussions that went on with Jack, but the one thing I heard was that um, there should be a GStreamer pipeline for Jack added, uh, added into GStreamer. Um, maybe the people who got some more information can add that on. Yeah. If you want to update the wiki, just, just put it in there. Um, and finally, um, OpenMux, which Conrad uh, gave a presentation about yesterday at the embedded miniconf, um, is, was another thing that was uh, discussed um, to choose an OpenMax IL framework. Uh, it's one of the things that, that we want to do. Um, and, of course, the inclusion of OGG or the support of OGG in some of these frameworks and components um, is a very big drive for us. As you can see, there was a lot of OGG-focused um, discussions at FOMS, but I think that is a very good thing because out of 
the CIF communities, we've got all these open media codecs that are actually patent free and unencumbered. Um, so we say, <laughs> but we want to prove that. <laughs> um, and um, of course, that's what we need to have in, in an open environment like Linux. Any more questions? Oh, we've got long-term goals. Yes, we've got some um, long-term long goals here as well, which are a bit broader. Um, so basically, in the end, it says we Oh, to summarize it in one, one, one word, um, world dominance for open media. <laughs> but yes, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. Org needs to become a file format that's too big to ignore for um, any uh, commercial entity. Um, only when that happens will we get proper support into authoring tools, into commercial authoring tools for an open format. Um, and um, we need to convince people to document more in, in, in the patent space and yeah, all of these bigger goals. Um, we've, we've put them up. Um, they will continue to exist for years to come, I'm sure. Okay, any more questions? Yes? Yeah, um, Yes, there was communication. We've got a lot of these people on the FOMS mailing list, but um, Australia is a far way, uh, far way to fly for a lot of these people. So people from VLC, we've encouraged to come. People from Mplayer, we've encouraged to come from Xene, um, um, Phonon, KDE, GNOME, and so on. We've encouraged all of these people to come, but um, it's a matter of expenses for traveling. These people also don't come to, to LCA because of, of these issues. So actually what we're trying to do right now is to organize a FOMS Europe um, in about six months, which will probably have a bit of a different focus, not as much of an OCK foc focus, but maybe more of a GNOME and KDE focus, or maybe more of a multimedia framework focus to get VLC people, Mplayer, uh, Xene and so on, GNOME, uh, GStreamer, um, people all together, which would be a really big achievement. But yeah, we can just have the people here that, that can afford to come or that we can afford to ship in. We had a little bit of, and I should say that, of sponsorship from Mozilla and we managed to fly in two people through the sponsorship from Mozilla. International flights are really expensive right now. The OC dollar isn't worth a lot and um, yeah, it's just a bit hard this year. Okay, more questions? Then I will hand over to Jan. Jan will give us some demos um, on, let me go back. Is that the right one? It's the wrong one. On Padma and Firefox. Okay, um, I'm, what I'm going to do is show some um, 
examples of using uh, video in HTML, and then I would uh, ex uh, go from there to show a video database I've been working on, and after that may, um, go on to uh, uploading video, since that is once one has it on the net web, one also has to get it there. Um, <coughs> I don't know how many of you have looked at the HTML5 specification, but uh, in the end it's rather simple. You have a video tag, like an image, you give it a source, and since <coughs> in the default way, then the video doesn't play, so there's a way to have controls, so you can have control. Um, all this is right now in Firefox uh, Nightly, uh, Firefox Nightly. So um, other browsers will support, uh, do support this already to some extent, or will support it. Uh, WebKit on, or Safari on uh, OS 10 is uh, has quite s has some support of it on Linux. Uh, they use GStream as backend, but it's uh, right now not really functional. Uh, but um, I think over time this will also become better. Um, Firefox decided to um, not use GStream initially, but um, use libocplay, which is which we also heard about before, to um, support open and free codecs. Um, so here we have a video playing inside of the browser. Um, so that like simple playback is not a problem. Um, that works. Uh, there's also audio, but I don't have audio uh, cable right now, so I will do it without audio. Um, <coughs> this already, um, to that extent, you could have done this before with um, with an, a plugin. But the different there are diff different plugins like Totem plugin or like the problem there was is that. A, it is uh, not part of the browser, and they all have different APIs. So um, as long as you just want to play play a video, that sort of works. They all have different uh, control interfaces with different sizes. They uh, behave differently. So if you want to have a bit more control, you are basically you cannot do it. Um, things you couldn't do at all is, uh, for example, integrate um, that into SVG and um, make uh, the video texture of a, a transformable element which you then can turn around and have transparency and do this kind of things. Um, <coughs> these are, I mean, that kind of animation uh, you could have done before in um, on a desktop, but uh, to do this now in the browser is, of course, is interesting and I think we will see uh, many um, design uh, uh, new forms of interface. I mean, there will be new ideas of how to use this coming up in uh, the next. I think it's really exciting that uh, what can happen here. Um, but certainly, uh, the that makes the des uh, the web an interesting platform for multimedia uh, with video. Like, um, but there are also things that are a bit um, bizarre, maybe. <laughs> Uh, people using uh, the video now, uh, uh, like doing edge detection on video inside of the browser, certainly doing this in JavaScript is a bit uh, slow, but I can I see for that for um, trying out algorithms or doing uh, working with it, it's probably uh, one of the, it's a quite fast uh, environment. I mean, in terms of development, you can try experiment a lot uh, without having to deal with um, <coughs> compiling it or um, depending. I mean, th that way you can experiment uh, things, and it's out there right away. Someone else can look at it. Um, so that. To the examples, and um, I don't know. I mean, <coughs> if you uh, have more, if you now work with uh, video archives uh, that are not uh, YouTube, so I mean, there are different ways of dealing with uh, video. Um, you probably want to have things like full text search in a 
in subtitles and show them along the uh, on the side and then maybe jump to a position in the video and play from there. Um, But uh, also uh, maybe think of uh, video players that do a bit more than just uh, playing the video, but also have other uh, views to the video. In this case, the, um, what you see below the video uh, is um, our um <coughs> temporal compressions of the video, so it's a representation of the video where, where every frame is represented by one pixel in the upper part and uh, one second is represented by one pixel in the lower part where the height is uh, showing some information of the video. This could be a, a player where you s uh, can now jump to... You also see some uh, problems with seeking in uh, the current Firefox here. Um, you can also take this, uh, what you also is already saw with the edge detection, you can right now take, a, grab a current frame of the video inside of a canvas element and then um, get the data of this frame there or just display it. So it allow you can use the video ag again in different, uh, as the, the data of the video, the frame and deal with it. The, the um, timeline below is not done in real time, but it's rendered uh, before and then just loaded as an image. But uh, since it would be interesting if that would be possible to do uh, on the fly. Um, but it's, yeah, also um, displaying subtitles below uh, a video, for example, is doesn't really fit on the screen. That is an example of uh, using our JavaScript to um, display an SRT subtitle um, uh, in aligned with the video and its current position, and for some reason it doesn't start playing. Um, um, there has been talks at forms as well to uh, uh, in the. Um, to integrate this more into HTML5, that um, video text can have uh, subtitle tracks assigned to them, and then uh, they are di displayed by default. Uh, but it's also possible for um, HTML authors to um, define how these uh, uh, how these subtitles should be displayed along with the video. Uh, it would be, I mean. Aligned, bringing that uh, in the specification is uh, interesting to make this uh, also in searchable uh, uh, and uh, get it right in most cases. Uh, one can do it already right, like this right now. Um, another ex something else I was playing with is uh, just uh, recording, uh, uh, which is now <coughs> not really uh, in HTML. Uh, it's not really done in the browser, but it's using a um, server which is on my, it's on the laptop and uh, using GStreamer to record the video, but uh, you can then immediately play it back again. Uh, but uh <coughs> I think there is some work going as well to use um, to create an input field that can um, take the uh, record uh, your video camera inside of, uh, I think Firefox did some, uh, someone wrote a patch for Firefox that would do it. There hasn't been to, to uh, 
allow people to upload uh, a video from the inside of the browser. In like you have a form element and say here you can is a video and then you record a video which then can be uploaded. Um, something like this could also be done as an extension maybe uh, in between. Uh, we'll see. I mean, for that is certainly uh, then <coughs> something that be is interest. I mean, is interesting for sites that allow people to upload videos, but also uh, for um, yeah, real-time communication, if that, I mean, just directly stream out of the browser, which uh, might also happen at some point, I think. Not soon, though. Um, <coughs> to bring all this together, uh, an, a project I've been working on is uh, Padma, which is a video database um, of uh, mostly documentary footage from uh, India uh, with a focus on Bombay right now, but it will, be, it will extend to other um, forms of material and, and other filmmakers are invited to um, contribute. Um, one reason to uh, cr create this uh, archive was that um, when you make a documentary film, you um, have a lot of material usually, of which you only um, choose a really limited amount to create a documentary. But uh, in many situations, it is interesting. Uh, uh, is the rest of the material is interesting, and this selection is only qui is a quite personal or limited choice. And for people that want to um, explore or research more on the topics, uh, it is interesting to provide this material. Um, but also to allow um, them to use it ag again in uh, maybe making a different version or um, having an argument about uh, this, uh, the topics. So <coughs> Padma is an attempt to collect um, this documentary footage and make it available um, to make it uh, to not only have the videos, if you have uh, th that amount of videos, and uh, it is important that uh, there's a way to find out what there is. So um, searching video is a problem because it's uh, not text, and you cannot really easily find what is happening in the video. Um, that's why we work on uh, annotations of video material um, by simple descriptions and so on, but there's also uh, like what you usually have that you have a title description date and this kind of metadata, but um, you can also easily see what what is what kind of a, like in this case we have a, an interview, but um, the interview is also uh, fully transcribed and there are descriptions and uh, keywords for it. There are locations um, where this is, for example, so here you can see where it is shot. Probably it will be too <laughs> close right now. Um, but, <coughs> but again, so you, ca um, you can also jump to any position in the video and uh, also create new layers of annotation here. You can say in and out and then add a keyword to it or add a description. Uh, all this uh, can be completely operated with a keyboard. It's something that uh, people doing a lot of uh, these transcriptions, they work with it a lot. Uh, it's important that they can just sit there and uh, go through it and add this annotation. This is, um, but you can also play the, the video here. Um, We the video the actual video playback right now is rather small and uh, not th the website works uh, mostly works without playing video because uh, video tech support is still experimental and um, supporting then other uh, forms of fallback like using uh, Cortado video player which is a Java implementation of uh, Theora is. Uh, complicated and uh, you don't have that flexibility uh, you get with having the video tech. You, it's, ba it's, uh, it's also got better over the last year that at least one can have uh, time-aligned information, get out the current position and this, this kind of things. 
So for some reason it doesn't play right now. Um, yeah, but we also uh, have this uh, look then the elements on a map, for example. Uh, <coughs> Michael will, uh, Dale from uh, MediaWiki will also demonstrate another. Um, uh, I think he, he will show it uh, more during the conference, but will later also introduce it a bit in terms of uh, how uh, annotation of video can uh, be used again for product. Uh, how how this now leads to uh, also using these uh, fragments again in uh, in, uh, in editing which is something that uh, is a logical next step from um, creating this annotated material to then um, m make new videos again with it, all still on in a collaborative way on the web, web and then uh, finding ways to export it again to a video. Um, internet. Uh, <coughs> to Get, but to get the videos uploaded to these um, sites, uh, you have two options. Either you uh, have good trans, uh, you have good description of what uh, format you want and how to do it from uh, with the material uh, uh, or from the workflows people use to get the material in a, in the in the format you finally use on the website or you allow people to upload any format to the uh, to your site and then um, transcode on the server. I think that these two uh, approaches, while the first one do doesn't really scale, uh, the other one is all uh, video hosting sites basically transcode the video to flash video right now or um, on archive or they also transcode to Octheora. But the idea is that you upload in uh, any format and then they do one step of uh, transcoding on the server which requires a lot of uh, CPU power and also is not optimal in terms of uh, quality and uh, bandwidth use. If you have a um, HDV video or a DV file you exported from your uh, video editing uh, tool then uh, this is uh, too big to upload, so you would have to transcode it first to something that is then big enough, uh, small enough to upload, or, and then the server does it again. Uh, in order to work around that, uh, I worked on a um, Firefox extension that um, does the transcoding on the client, and w websites can integrate it into their um, upload interface uh, and transcode on the client, and then upload the result to the um to the side um yeah this is rather uh, new and will, uh, there will be a bit change in what you can do right now it um uh, allows you to encode it and then upload it uh, um for the next version there will be it will be possible to upload while you encode so the time your computer spends encoding is also used already for uploading the video um, so, uh, and the, but that would require a bit more uh, work on uh, having a protocol for sending, uh, uploading chunks of the video. Um, otherwise, you have uh, you can define your uh, encoding settings and do the encoding on the uh, client. I can uh, maybe do this while I'm. Um, yeah, this video bin is a small website to uh, upload video, uh, um, just post video chunks. And so here you see uh, that it's encoding the video, and uh, this happens on my laptop. And once it's done, it will upload it. And then it's already there. Um, And maybe it even works. 
Um, any questions or ideas for using the video tag or what is what Firefox? Well, <laughs> it worked earlier today, so I don't know. Um, yeah, it already says 100% uploading, so um, it has one. It so it displays. Uh, it has progress indication, which is one of the reasons. When I wrote it, it, it I wrote it with uh, Firefox 3.1 uh, beta, and uh, there there is the API to do this. Um, when now, th uh, when trying to figure out if it's possible to uh, also support older versions, uh, that would, was one of the uh, parts that would be difficult. But also uh, serialization of uh, JSON inside of extensions was a problem. So right now you need uh, a Firefox 3.1 beta to use it. But there you have uh, progress information for remote requests. I mean, the certainly the after uploading the file, you would still. I mean, since you could also um, pretend to have uploaded uh, encoded it, you would have to check the uploaded file that it. I mean, that it's a valid uh, OC file. Uh, if there's a buffer overflow in the uh, video codec or audio codec, uh, which seems at that point unlikely, but it can, of course. Uh, be the case. I, I, I would expect that having to decode anything and transcode it, you are, have a bigger risk that you have a buffer flow on your server. Uh, in in the initial material that you transcode to, so I mean I, that is a bigger risk for a server. While um, now, if you stream it again to the clients, uh, if there is a if we have the problem of a buffer overflow in OC files, then uh, Firefox has to anyway release a new version of Firefox to prevent from this to happen because it's not only uh, video hosting sites but anybody could host a video on any web server and then uh, link to it and then if your browser would crash be or uh, be so you would want to um, I don't know in the case you had you had this buffer overflow and it was in in your on encoded on your server you then could re-encode it I think one reason why uh, it is inter it might be of interest to um, get the best possible video on the server is that you haven't decided on the format yet that you want to re-encode later in another version. Um, uh, MediaWiki, for example, is considering to um, upload two versions to encode. So to use this uh, to uh, to use Firefox to encode two versions: one for archiving and one for streaming. So that way uh, they have a higher quality version in case there is, uh, uh, it's possible or there is an interest in creating a different version from that. I mean, yeah, I read that uh, YouTube gets uh, 15 hours per minute 
a new video material. So um, they need quite some operation. Thank you.